So the equation of a line can be expressed as y equals mx plus c. Now y and x, they're your x and y axes, and that's where you can put in an x value and it'll spit out a y value. But m and c are numbers, and those numbers have significance. Now first, this c on the end, it tells you the y-intercept of your line. And the m value tells you the gradient of your line, how sloped your line is. A very quick example, if y equals 2x plus 3, find the gradient. And in this case, you're just finding it, you just look for it. There it is. The gradient is equal to 2, and find the y-intercept. There it is. Done. Now these can be positive, negative, they can be fractions, whatever. So in this example, if y equals negative 1 half x minus 2, find the gradient. Well, the gradient is the thing that the x is multiplied, which is this thing here. So it equals negative 1 half. And find the y-intercept, that's this thing here. Don't forget to bring the sign along with it. The y-intercept is negative 2. Simple as that. But what is a gradient? We've talked about gradient before as being the slope of the line, but what does the number 2 or the number 5 or the ne number negative 3 mean for a gradient? That's what we need to think about. It's a ratio. Although most people don't think of it as a ratio, it is a ratio. In particular, it's the ratio between how far up something goes and how far across something goes. Now you'll never see it written as a ratio of up to across, that's just not something we do. Instead of writing it as a ratio, we write it as a fraction, and instead of using the words up and across, we use rise over run. This formula is one of the most important things that you're going to learn about linear equations, mega important. So now we can do a question, find the gradient of this line. Now. We just pick a random point on the line that we know. All right, so this is one, two, three, four. This is one, two, three, four. And we pick this point here. Now again, we imagine a car driving this way. And that would mean that it's driving up this hill. That's gonna be important in a minute. All right, here's a point here. And then we pick a second point. We have a nice point here. Doesn't matter which point we pick, because these are ratios, so they're all going to simplify down to something in the end. Anyway, all right, I'm going to move across. I'm going to move up. And then I'm going to ask myself, how far did I move up? And how far did I move across? And I'm going to use this formula to finish it all off. The gradient is equal to rise. How far did I go up? One, two, three, four. Over run. How far did I go across? One, two, two. The gradient is equal to 4 over 2. If we simplify that, 4 divided by 2 is 2. The gradient of that line is 2. Now that I've found the gradient, finding the equation of the line would be easy. Now we know all straight lines can be written as y equals mx plus c. And we know that m is the gradient, and we know that c is the y-intercept. So we just need to know those two things. We just figured out the gradient. We know that that's 2. y equals 2x. What about this y-intercept? Okay, y-axis, y-intercept, this point here, that point there is negative 2. So that means that the equation of that line is y equals 2x minus 2. This is such a vital skill that you just can't get enough practice with this. So we're going to find all the gradients of these four lines. This is line A, line B, line C, and line D. So, Let's start with line A. Now the way that we start this is always the same. M equals rise over run. And now we need to find out how far across it's going for every so much, how far up it's going for every so much across. All right, so this is line A here. Now we can pick any points we like on this line, but in this case it seems obvious that we've got two very handy points here. So let's use those two very handy points and draw ourselves a nice little triangle. Do, 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 across, and then up, do, 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 do. makes a nice little right angle triangle. Now, how far up did it go? One, two, three. How far across did it go? One, two, three over two. The gradient of A is three over two. Now, I told you it doesn't matter what points you chose. I really want to show you what I mean by that. If I picked this point over here, and drew a bigger triangle, so do, 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 all the way across to there, and then all the way up through there. 
the gradient will be equal to rise over run. How far up did we go? One, two, three, four, five, six. We went six across, and how far uh, up and six, how many across? One, two, three, four, four across. Six over four, which we can simplify to three over two. The points that you choose don't matter, just choose points that you like. Now, what about B? Now, this gradient's special because it's gonna be negative, because remember, a car driving on this from left to right, that's a car, oh, I need to work on my drawing. A car driving will be going downhill, which means that there's not a rise, or there's a negative rise, I guess. Okay, um, we can choose any points we like. Uh, it would be probably helpful to use these points since they're the x and y intercepts and they're easy to see, but I'm gonna show you that you definitely don't have to use those points, you can use any points, and I'm gonna use these points that are here. All right, so connecting the, these points with a right angle triangle will look like this. And then we look at how far down did it go because my car is driving downhill and how far across did it go. Okay, so it's gone one, two, three, four across. So if I write my formula, m equals rise over run, it goes four across. And how far down did it go? One, two, it went two down. Negative two, down negative. Negative two over four, the gradient of this is negative one half, that's B. What about C? Now again, M equals rise over run. You can see that C is sloping upwards, which means that it's gonna have a positive gradient. Um, some simple points for us to use are this point that's been put in there, and then that point there. All right, so one, two, three across, and one up, M equals rise over run, one up, three across, the gradient is one third. And finally, D. And D is a little bit funny here because if I use the X and, y, X and Y intercepts and I draw in my line like I have here, what I get is a fall of one and a half. So, um, rise, negative 1.5, and run three across. Negative 1.5 divided by three. You can put that into your calculator if you want to. And if you do, you'll get negative one half. So now that I've found all of the gradients of all four of those lines, it would be really easy to find the equations of those lines. So I'm hiding down here now. Let's do y equals mx plus c of this line a here. Now, we know the gradient of line a was 3 over 2. And we know that the y-intercept, let's look for it, it's here, 1, 2, 3, negative Three. That's the equation of line A. Now, what about the equation of line B here? Now, we know it's going to be y equals mx plus c. We know that B had a gradient of negative a half. So, y equals negative one half x. And then this y intercept, one, two, uh, that's B there, two, plus two. And, of course, what about C down here? Well, let's write the equation up here, shall we? y equals mx plus c. We know the gradient of c was one third, so uh, y equals one third x, and then looking at our y-intercept, one, two, three, plus three. And of course, let's not forget about d. Um, the gradient is one half, y equals negative one half x, and the y-intercept is 1.5, or negative 1.5, negative 1.5. That is the equation of the line, gradients and y-intercepts.